there's been a lot of chatter about the Dynasty series. And there's additional reporting to be done, and I'm in the process of trying to do it, as it relates to the existence or lack thereof of official connections between the production and the crafts who own the New England Patriots. There's a copyright symbol at the very end of each episode that says Craft Dynasty LLC. And I'm getting different explanations about what that signifies, but it's making people think that the crafts are the ones who are behind who this. own this production. Right. And it's caused, and even without that, there are plenty of people who think it's calculated to make Bill Belichick, the former coach of the Patriots, look bad and make Robert Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, look good. I'm not breaking news here. That's been out there since the first episode's debuted. Right. And you can look at it and say, I understand why people think that. Yeah, right. So here's an here's another here's another piece of ammunition for anyone that may want to think that or anyone who's trying to come to a decision on whether or not that perception is reality. Devin McCourty, who is featured extensively in the Dynasty series, and Rodney Harrison, who we just see for about three or four seconds, and he's dropping F-bombs in the three or four seconds that we see him, which you and I have never heard him do. We gave him a hard time about that at the scouting combine when we visited with him on set. We've never heard him use the F word, and he's dropping F-bombs in the one clip that makes it into the Dynasty. Here they are. They got together yesterday for a little FNIA chatter about different things going on currently in the NFL. This is some of what they had to say about their reaction to the Dynasty series. It just seems so Tom and Bill-centric and crack. It was, it was I, I, I didn't enjoy it. I, I stopped because it didn't tell the stories, like, of me coming and Corey Dillon. And, you know, it, it was just, it was centered around some things that I wasn't really feeling. And um, I just stopped watching you know, I mean, I, I interviewed for five or six hours. I was in New York and all they had me saying was come on, come on. Like, that's it. That's all I saw myself say. Like, I have a lot of input into Tom and, and how these guys treated me and the things that happened that led to me signing here. That was a big deal. You know, I, I just I wasn't a big fan of it. I felt like I got kind of duped because. I was just like you. I did like four or five hours in New York, and then I did another like two or three hours in Massachusetts. And I was like, man, this is going to be great. Like the storytelling, we're talking about this and we're talking about that. And then I watched and I was just like, man, like only things I said that could come across as negative towards Bill was the only thing. Like, I mean, I had different kind of quick sentences on things, but the longest thing I talked about was 2016 with Trump and the letter and everything. And I thought that was probably the worst part that everything that we all gave to the 20 years that it encompassed, they only hit anything that was negative. I thought 2010 was like a changing of the guard for so many different things with New England. Like some of the older players were gone and it was just like every move had to be made right to try to move on. And the only thing they talked about was Aaron Hernandez. That's just some of it. You can see the whole thing on the NFL on NBC YouTube page. We've got a, a link as well at the PFT item regarding their reaction to the dynasty. I don't know if you've watched it, Chris. No, but, no. I've seen clips. Hey, I've read telling some to transcripts. Hear, it's telling to right. hear from guys who right. were who were interviewed. It, right. they, they were there. They put in the time, and they know what's on the cutting room floor because they provided it. Yeah, well, it, it's just crazy because it, it's like – for the greatest team in the history of football, the greatest dynasty we've ever seen, I've never seen so much negativity, right? That's from within the team, right? The players, I didn't like playing here. I'm mad at the coach because he didn't pay me enough money. And well, you could have tested free agent. You didn't believe in yourself. You didn't think you were going to be as good somewhere else. You knew you had to stay in New England. Now you're mad at Bill Belichick because he didn't pay you enough. And there's just a lot of bitterness around the whole thing. And it does seem like everybody's always trying to, you know, put Belichick in the negative light there. And again, this is what we talked about at the end of his career where, or the end of last year, you know, the way he's treated people, I, I, again, I think has given people the jump off to like, oh, it's the hell with him. I don't, we don't need to be that nice to him or whatever else there. But it is rare 
right, uh, to see such a great dynasty, and there always seems to be more negative stuff come out of it than positive, right? And uh, and uh, and that is odd to me, Mike. Uh, it definitely jumps out. Well, and you know what else it does, Chris? Because I've said this a time or two in the months since Bill Belichick and the Patriots parted ways. Whatever he does in 2024 by way of media, he needs to have as one of the top factors, how can I leverage this to get a fan base to want me? Because when we did a very unscientific Twitter poll during football season, when it looked like it was going to end between him and the Patriots, the question was very generic. If your favorite team is looking for a coach after this current season, do you want Bill Belichick? And it was over 70%. No. He's got to win a fan base in addition to winning an owner. And this doesn't help him. This being out there. And, you know, every time you see him in this, and I, one of the other things my wife said, because I always judge her reaction to things because she doesn't follow it like we do. So the stuff that resonates with her is the stuff that, like, wow, that must be a big deal. She, she was like, how, why did he even do this? Like, why, like, how did they get all these people to do this? That was the thing that impressed me out of the gates. How do you get all these folks to, to submit to this? And every time Belichick is seen, and he always looks naturally uncomfortable in every setting we see him in anyway, he looks even more uncomfortable. I mean, he's just very, like, sitting back and hostage video-ish. It, 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 this does him no favors as it relates to his effort to go somewhere else and shape a new legacy for himself, which I would suppose at some level Robert Kraft probably doesn't want him to do. He already had to live through Tom Brady going somewhere else and winning a Super Bowl. He'd probably prefer. I mean, I would. I'd, I wouldn't want to see Bill Belichick go somewhere else after I shoved him overboard and, and win Super Bowls and, and rediscover his magic and put together some new dynasty somewhere else. I want it to be everything that happened here. Yeah, no, I, 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 I hear you. I, I don't think the Kraft family would want that. I don't, I don't love the, the, like, you know, again, I know Bill Belichick has done some things, and I wish he would have treated the media better and been a little more, you know, open talking and all that. But it does seem like it's a kind of a smear campaign everywhere right now about Belichick, wherever you look, people talking about him negative or Brady did it all right. And that's another thing too, to what Rodney says. And a lot of players from his era, they always, and, and, and a lot, I've talked to a lot of people, they feel the, especially those first group of Patriot teams that Brady gets too much of the, the credit. The team was awesome. You know, they didn't even need him in the AFC championship game to go to the first Super Bowl. He threw for 140 yards in the first Super Bowl. They won the game. He threw for one touchdown and one interception in the next AFC championship and 230 yards, and they went to the Super Bowl. He threw three interceptions in the AFC championship game in 2007 to go to the Super Bowl. Who the, That doesn't happen. But, so the team is really damn good, and all it is is Brady, 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 Brady. And then somewhere in the last, like, six or seven years, and, I, you know, again, I think it's Brady because he went to Tampa Bay and what happened, it's all of a sudden been it was all Brady. Like, are you kidding me? The Patriot mystique was created by Bill Belichick. Their ability to win big games when they might not be the best team and all of that. I mean, that was all created by him. The invention of Wes Welker and the Danny Amendola's of the world. It is all because of Bill Belichick. There was no such thing as the slot little jitterbug, you know, the two tight ends set, the unbelievable defensive game plans, right? I think everybody's going through revisionist history here. I think not at the right way. The context at the time in the mid-2000s was like at no year was Brady ever considered the best quarterback in football, maybe until 2007. That's what, but most people were like, ah, oh, no, Peyton Manning, ooh, Brett Favre, hey, Brady's up there, ooh, he's clutching big games. But nobody was like, oh, this is like, you know, like we feel about Mahomes or all that. It grew into that. And then post Seattle winning that Super Bowl, it took off to another level, right? But yeah, I mean, I know I'm talking about a lot of stuff here, but I just don't love the overall history smear campaign right now about Bill Belichick. And I feel like a lot of it, oddly enough is coming out of Boston or from expatriate players and all that stuff, which is, is crazy to me. I it just, it is, it's crazy. Well, I think a lot of the frustration from the former Patriot players, especially that first set, because it was 
two different teams. Yeah. That's the point That's that right. Devin McCourty made. Right. And you see Devin McCourty and Rodney Harrison, they never played together. No. They never played together. McCourty arrived after Rodney retired. But they're all linked under that same 20-year umbrella. But it's the team that won three and four years with great defense and Tom Brady just kind of doing enough. Yeah. Being really good. Don't get me. Awesome. Coaching in the defense. Right. But it wasn't like he was carrying the squad, right? Yeah. Yeah. But think about think about on the back end when they finally, after a 10 year hiatus, win another Super Bowl. Beating the Seahawks in that game in the throes of Deflate Gate. That was like the pivot point. Like when Tom Brady with fully inflated footballs goes out there and beats the Seahawks coming back from a 10 point deficit in the fourth quarter. Yeah. That was the launching pad for the legend of Tom Brady. That's and right. then comes Super Bowl 51. That was really it. Right. And then he, he reaches the Michael Jordan stratosphere. I remember saying the day after that game, you, you know, he has achieved the status in his sport where you have to go see him play at some point before he retires. That was the Michael Jordan vibe at some yeah, point. I've got to right. go see him play in person at some right. point before he retires. That was after that game. And then they went another one after that, even though it was a masterful game plan, which is covered in the dynasty. And that was one of the things that Devin McCourty said. That was the one time where they really delved into the X's and O's. The idea that that they they crafted a complete pivot to zone faced the Rams that year because they knew the Rams struggled with zone and it confounded Jared Goff and Sean McVay and they only scored three points the whole game but you know there's yeah as Rodney says for one game X's and O's give me Bill Belichick right as as Mike McDaniel told me at the combine this year the defensive game plan that Bill Belichick ran and the second game when they played them he goes it was the best defensive game plan I may have ever faced Right, but he told me that as he was getting off the set this year, he goes, "He you got he goes, you got to go back and watch that and dissect it." He goes, "Because we were talking about some X's and O's stuff." He goes, "You got to go back and watch that and do watch some of the stuff he did to us that day." He goes, "So Bill, it's still there, and this is where the revisionist history it does bother me." Brady's the man, I know that, I get it. But I don't love that it's become Brady is getting all the credit all of a sudden. I don't. Because in 2009, Brady was average. In 2010, Brady was average. It wasn't great. It was top seven or eight-ish in football. In 2011, they go to the Super Bowl. I mean, again, he threw two intercept. I mean, he threw two interceptions and no touchdowns in the AFC Championship game. They went to the Super Bowl. The next year, he threw two interceptions again, and they lost in the AFC Championship game. In 2013, when it was the year when they were finally like, man, I think it's coming to the end for Tom, and so was most of the NFL, and I was working there and breaking down the film and going, there's people open everywhere, and Brady won't throw the ball to anybody, right? 2013, they go and play the Broncos, and the Broncos go, we're just going to play a defense to stop LeGarrette Blunt because Tom Brady can't hit the broadside of a barn, and that's where they went, I think we got a drafted quarterback. I think it might be over for Tom. And then Tom resurrected it all and certainly was awesome. I get that. But I just, when my point is more of, I don't like how people are just now going like, oh, it was all, like all that. Brady, it was amazing what he did in the Super Bowl there against the Seahawks. He did throw an interception in the end zone and his defense made the biggest play of the game. I just want to remind people that, you know, the, the Super Bowl 51 is phenomenal. He did win another Super Bowl scoring just 13 points. I mean, again, so I'm just trying to, again, show some love to Bill Belichick where I feel like he's been getting crapped on, and maybe he deserves it in a lot of ways, but it just seems like it's gotten a little overboard for me. And, again, maybe I'm biased. I grew up in that Parcells, Belichick. I believe in everything about their aura and what they build and the big game and the toughness, and I'm the general here, and that's the way it goes. I'm old school like that, so I'm into that. Uh, but I feel like, yeah, some of the new age guys are, are kind of disrespecting Bill in a lot of ways. Now, at the risk of triggering you like I did yesterday, and I got multiple emails saying, uh-oh, mom and dad are fighting. I know. Now. So I got home. My really wife was like, fighting. are you guys okay? Are you guys good? I was like, of course we are. Come on. We don't even think twice about no. it. It ends when right. we go to break. But I do believe, I do believe that without Brady, they wouldn't have won a Super Bowl. And I'm not saying, I, mean, I don't think Bill Belichick would have had enough time in New England to do what he needed to do without Brady stepping in when he did. I don't think Drew Bledsoe fit 
with Bill Belichick. I, I and look, Belichick was already yeah. planning to pivot to Brady. He right. wanted to pivot to Brady. Right, so Mike, he but, but, but I would say, like, to your point is, I don't know if we ever hear about Tom Brady ever if it isn't for Bill Belichick. That So that would be my counter to yours. I don't disagree with your comment. Bel Brady, you know, and this is why Belichick liked him, is why Bar Parcells liked my dad. It's I, this guy will be a quiet, humble leader and work and show everybody and do all that stuff. And they love that about him. They knew he was all in. That's why Brady's one of the greatest leaders, generals of all time, right? So I'm with you. I don't know if he would have won any either, right? Brady did do a lot of the things that, of course, make it all come together as a team, to work as a team. And then he got time to grow as well to where then he became like, whoa, I could take over a game here, right? But, you know, hey, there's two sides to every story with that. Michael Jordan is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life in any sport anywhere. He was an inevitable, unstoppable force. He couldn't win and get to the NBA Finals until he got Phil Jackson there. So, as we know, it goes both ways there with this one, and I don't think your comment's crazy there. I don't disagree. I'm just giving a little pushback there. Well, no, and, and look, I agree. Hey, it was a disaster the first year for Bill Belichick. We know that coaches don't get an unlimited runway. Look how much time he got on the back end of winning yeah, Super right? Bowl <laughs> right, before right. it was time to move on. Right. If they hadn't gotten something going, it would have been, all right, this Belichick thing didn't work out. Let's move on to the next guy. So it all kind of fell together perfectly. It all blossomed perfectly. They got three and four years. They were still contenders. They went through ups and downs, highs and lows, and then they got three more after that. It is a shame. And I understand, and look, regardless of, of whether agendas or biases crept into it, there is a natural inclination to – focus on things that are controversial and things that yeah. create drama right it is you know it is intended to get people's attention it can't just be confetti and and you know positive vibes the whole time but still what they did is something that isn't going to be replicated anytime soon and as robert Kraft says near the end of it not in his lifetime not in my lifetime well, chris not in your lifetime we're not going to see a team dominate the nfl the way that we've seen the patriots do it unless right. we're in the middle of it with the, the chiefs and patrick mahomes i mean well it's we, it's we a may, certainly we may, a happier we may not wait there. 10 years yeah yeah we, we may not wait 10 years between number three and number four for the kansas city chiefs no i i, I would doubt it with the pace they're on right now right it, it's definitely a little bit of a happier vibe there but but you know i know controversy and all that sells and all that too but man they're missing out and i want to watch this i've only read you know clips transcripts things like that that were in articles about what people said on the dynasty and all that but I've had a lot of people tell me about it but where I I, I hear the negative negativity and I think what Devin McCourty and Rodney Harrison are talking about there's so many amazing Bill Belichick New England Patriot behind the scenes football stories that we know right whether it's like, hey, wait, we're going to travel to play this team and we're all waiting on the bus because Bill remembered a game all of a sudden from 12 years ago and he remembered he heard it on the TV what the guy was checking to and he thinks that's what they're checking to here and we're going to wait for that. It's like it's crazy stuff like that. There's, there's so many great stories to show the greatness of them. And that's, to me, where we're losing them and some of those stories that would be amazing to, to football people, all of us, to kind of go the negative, you know, controversial route, which, you know, I get, but I don't love all the way. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.